This is the new 2024 Chevy Corvette E-Ray, and it's a hybrid Corvette with all-wheel drive. Since its beginning 70 years ago, the Corvette has been all about big power and a V8, and this, well, it is that also. But it's also a major step in a new direction for Chevrolet and for the Corvette. And today, I'm going to show you around the C8 E-Ray and show you all of its interesting quirks and features. Before I get started, be sure to check out Cars and Bids, which is my enthusiast car auction website for cool cars from the modern era, the 1980s and up. We've had some fantastic sales recently on Cars and Bids, including this Sprinter van, which sold for just under $70,000, this wonderful E46 BMW M3, which brought just under $30,000, and this amazing Smart Crossblade, which sold for $55,000 an absolutely ridiculous car. We love stuff like that on Cars and Bids. If you're looking to buy or sell an enthusiast car from the modern era, Cars and Bids is the place to do it with daily auctions and great selection. Check it out at carsandbids.com. All right, I'm going to start the quirks and features of this car by first discussing the basics like what exactly is this? Like I said, the 2024 Chevy Corvette E-Ray. Now, E-Ray is like Stingray, which is what they call the normal Corvette, except now it's E-Ray for electric. But this car is not fully electric. There was some speculation about an upcoming electric or hybrid Corvette. Would it be full electric? Would it be a plug-in hybrid? And in the end, it is a traditional hybrid, sort of like the regular Toyota Prius. Not exactly a car to reasonably compare this to, but important to point out, not full electric, you don't even plug it in somewhere, it's just a hybrid car. Now, as for the other basics, the E-Ray is going to be offered as a coupe or a convertible. And of course, the coupe, which is this version, also comes with a removable Targa top. So you can sort of have a convertible experience even if you get the coupe. And it's going to go on sale sometime later this year. Chevy hasn't said exactly when as a 2024 model. So let's talk powertrain. You hear hybrid car and you think about some economical hatchback that's designed to maximize fuel economy and it's boring and it's neutered. That is not the situation here. In fact, this car isn't neutered at all. It has the exact same powertrain, the same V8 as the regular C8 Corvette. So that's a 495 horsepower pushrod V8. Not something you often hear about a hybrid car, but that's what's going on back here. The E-Ray also has basically the same transmission as the standard C8, which is an eight-speed dual clutch, a fantastic transmission that works wonderfully. So the basics are pretty similar to a standard C8, which as we know is a great car. You're thinking, oh, what about the hybrid stuff? You get an electric motor up front that adds 160 horsepower and 125 pound-feet of torque. Now the result of that is the two powertrains combined make for an amazing 650 55 horsepower. That's an absolutely huge figure. It towers way over the number in the standard C8 and it lags just behind the C8 Z06, which comes in at 670 horsepower. So this hybrid Corvette is only a little bit behind the ultimate high performance Z06. Now, in addition to the power, the other big benefit that the hybrid powertrain adds is all-wheel drive. All other Corvette models are rear-wheel drive, but not this one. It adds all-wheel drive for better launches, better handling, and certainly better all-season grip and capabilities. Now, a second ago, I made the comparison between this car and the Z06, and that's an important comparison to make, not just because they're similar on power, but there are a lot of other similarities between the E-Ray and the Z06. For one thing, the E-Ray uses the Z06's body. I mentioned in my Z06 reviews that that car is wider than a standard C8 Corvette, about three and a half inches wider in back, two and a half inches wider in front, and the E-Ray shares that extra width. Now, the reason for the width is they need more room in back and in front for wider tires. You got to be able to put all that power to the ground, and so you need bigger tires and thus bigger fenders to go over the
the tires, and that's what this car has. Amazingly, the E-Ray comes standard with all season tires and absolutely massive ones. In back, 345 width. 21 inch all season tires, which General Motors tells me they're pretty sure is the widest all season tire ever put on any production car in history. And that makes sense because usually when you get to that width, you're running summer tires. Now, summer tires are going to be an option on the C8 E Ray, but all season tires are standard because, well, it's an all wheel drive car. General Motors tells me they do get people interested in all wheel drive Corvettes. They get people asking about it. They want to use the car in all weather. And so all season tires and all wheel drive make sense to combine them for a more daily usable year round Corvette. So the C8 E-Ray has the Z06 body and near Z06 power, but you gotta figure it's gonna be heavier than a Z06 because it adds these hybrid components and they're gonna add some weight to this car. And indeed they do, apparently around 300 pounds for a total curb weight of around 4,000 pounds. Makes this car pretty heavy. So it's heavier than a Z06 and it's got less power than a Z06, but Chevy says it is faster than a Z06. In fact, they are certain of that. They're quoting a zero to 60 time of two and a half seconds for this car and a quarter mile time about 10 and a half seconds, both of which are just a tick faster than the Z06. And I asked them to confirm that and they said, yes, this car is faster and particularly when it's cold because the all wheel drive launch is better. When it's cold, the C8 Z06 with its rear wheel drive and its summer tires has trouble hooking up. This doesn't have the same trouble and it can accelerate a little bit quicker despite less power and more weight. But despite the speed, despite the power, despite those incredible acceleration times, this car is not intended to be quite as crazy performance car as the Z06. Instead, it's supposed to be kind of a luxury alternative to the Z06. It's being pitched as more of a GT car than the Z06. For people who want all the power of a Z06, but not necessarily the harsh ride, the crazy look, the Z06-ness of it all. If you still want the performance, but something a little softer, this is the car for that. And indeed, the suspension in the E-Ray has been specifically tuned to make it more comfortable, a little softer, a little calmer. Chevy tells me the suspension in this car is a lot closer to the C8 with the Z51 package than it is to a Z06 with its stiff springs for maximizing track performance. This is the luxury Z06. And indeed, there are some changes to the outside of the E-Ray that help drive that point home. One is the painted trim panels, especially this one here on the air intake on the side. The Z06, that's black. Here, it's painted to give it a more luxurious, more premium finish, and maybe not necessarily as aggressive or in your face. And other trim panels that are black painted on the Z06 are body colored on this car, again, to give it a more subdued look. Same deal with the wheels. The E-Ray gets this wheel design, which is specific only for this car, not offered on other C8 models, but it's here. And again, less aggressive, less in your face, a little bit more relaxed and calm and cool to go along with this car's image. Now, speaking of exterior changes to the E-Ray, a couple of other interesting ones to note. For one, you have this badge mounted here on the outside of this air intake, specifically says E-Ray, which makes it pretty obvious from a glance that this is well, the E-Ray. You also have a different Stingray design on the back. This design here looks different than the one in the standard C8 Stingray. You have to look closely, you have to know what you're looking for, but they are different. Just a change because this car is changed. One other important thing to keep in mind is the exhaust situation in this car. You have four exhaust pipes, as you can see, like all C8 models have, but the Z06 has four center mounted pipes and this has four pipes, two on each side, just like the standard C8, as you can see here. And the reason is the E-Ray shares this powertrain with the standard C8. So it also shares the exhaust tips, makes sense, doesn't keep that from the Z06. And by the way, speaking of the exhaust, this car sounds absolutely amazing for a hybrid. Take a listen. Indeed, that 
is not the sound you'd expect to hear from pretty much any other hybrid in existence. So you've heard some of the basics. Let's talk pricing. Chevy says it's going to start around $104,000, a little bit more. And that's about $1,000 cheaper than a Z06. So it's going to be priced right up there with the Z06. And that's for the coupe model. The convertible version is around $7,000 more. Again, just a little bit cheaper than the Z06. But one interesting distinction, the E-Ray comes standard with carbon ceramic brakes. In the Z06, they're optional and they're expensive. Part of some pricey option package, you got to pay a lot of money extra. But here, they're standard on all E-Ray models. Helps make it make more economic sense. So let's talk about some other changes with the E-Ray compared to the standard C8 and the Z06. One of the most notable is a new feature called Charge Plus, which allows you to quickly recharge the battery at the push of a button. Now, since this car isn't a plug-in hybrid, you can't just plug it in if you want to recharge the battery. So you might find yourself in situations where you've almost fully depleted the battery, but you want more juice so you can get the maximum power, and that's where Charge Plus mode comes in. You go into Charge Plus and the car maximizes the charge to the battery as you drive along. It adds drag to the car, but that helps to give the battery additional charge and get it all the way boosted back up so it's ready to use again. Charge Plus mode is active. It speeds above 15 miles an hour and Chevy says the maximum speed you want to be going is around 60 miles an hour. And when you're in Charge Plus mode, you will feel the additional drag on the car being used used to generate energy to go back into the battery. You will feel it as you drive, but if you want to charge up the battery as quickly as possible, that's how you do it. You might be thinking, why would I ever want to use Charge Plus mode? The thought is, if you're about to do a fast lap on a racetrack and you want to make sure your battery is fully charged so that hybrid system can give you all the power possible, that's when you might use Charge Plus in order to boost the battery and make sure you have your full battery capacity for a race track lap or a few drag strip passes. Now, to go into Charge Plus mode, you have this little button here on the side of the center tunnel near the driver's seat. You can press that and enter Charge Plus. And you can see that button is positioned directly next to an auto start stop button, which is a first for the C8. C8 Corvette does not come with auto start stop until now. This one does. That's the feature that'll shut off the car like at a stoplight or if you're idling in order to save fuel. But don't go thinking that because this car is a hybrid, it's going to get some crazy fuel economy. In fact, Chevy tells me that wasn't even really the goal. The hybrid system is only in this car to maximize performance, and any additional gains in fuel economy or efficiency is like a nice added benefit to the E-Ray. Now, on the subject of efficiency, it is worth pointing out that the E-Ray can operate in full electric mode, but not very far. Chevy calls it stealth mode, and they say this car can go about three or four miles on fully electric power alone. In order to access stealth mode, you get into the car, and then you move the drive mode selector dial over, and you can see there's the one for stealth mode. And you select it, and then when you start up the car, you're in stealth mode. The thinking is you wouldn't use this to really drive anywhere, but maybe to start up the car if you want to leave your driveway or your neighborhood early in the morning before cars and coffee or some fast drive, and you don't want to wake people up. You start off in stealth mode, and then you kick on the power, the gas engine, after a few miles of driving. Other notable changes to the E-Ray. For one thing, the center tunnel between the seats and the interior inside this space, there's now batteries. In previous C8 models, this was just dead space, empty space. And some people wondered why they left it there unused. Well, now we have our answer. This car was developed from the beginning with the knowledge that batteries would go in that spot for a future hybrid model. And indeed, now they're there. Also worth pointing out, there's a change in the front suspension suspension of this car in order to accommodate the half shafts that are required to make it an all-wheel drive vehicle. You can see the suspension component up here kind of forks in two to go around the half shaft, and it only does that in the E-Ray models in order to make for the all-wheel drive system. There's also an oil cooler up front in order to cool the hybrid components in front, and that, plus the suspension changes and other minor stuff, leads to a slight reduction in cargo space, but tremendously slight in the 
front, you would probably not even notice it, but it's there and it's minor. Now, also worth pointing out with the front trunk, one interesting thing Chevy told me is being added to all 2024 Corvette models, the front trunk is now soft closed. So you can get it into this position and you can see it latches itself automatically. This is gonna be a huge relief to people who are tired of having to push it closed and then get a handprint on their newly washed car. Now it will close for you, which is a nice feature to add. Also notable up here is the carbon fiber situation. You can see this carbon fiber front splitter looks very cool. And that goes along with a carbon fiber side skirt down the side of the car. This is part of an optional aero package. It's not gonna be on every E-Ray model, but it does look nice if you want some exterior carbon. And finally, moving inside the E-Ray, I haven't covered the interior all that much because there aren't that many changes to the interior of the E-Ray compared to other C8 models, but still worth pointing out. For one thing, an enormous amount of carbon fiber in here, as you can see. The entire center area is carbon fiber, the gauge cluster surround, the steering wheel, you got carbon fiber on the doors, you got it on the seats, and there's a lot of carbon fiber. This is optional in this car, but you can add it if you want, well, a lot of carbon in your interior. And speaking of this interior, you can see it is a nice, handsome, luxurious one. You get these beige accents, lovely perforated leather and contrast stitching. It's all a bit of a luxury build this car, kind of fitting with the image that Chevy sees with it. Now, obviously, you'll be able to equip it how you want and change interior colors and materials, but this has kind of the luxury build that I suspect Chevy expects a lot of these will. As for changes to the interior of the E-Ray, I already showed you those buttons on the side of the center tunnel in the driver's seat area for auto start stop and charge plus mode. Other than that, not really any notable ones. You do have E-Ray at the bottom of the steering wheel to distinguish the model, and you have E-Ray on the door sill when you open the door on driver and passenger side, but other than that, it's a pretty standard C8 Corvette interior in here, which is to say a reasonably nice one with that giant row of buttons in the center tunnel has become kind of famous in this car. It's where all your climate controls are located. Now, as for driving this car, unfortunately, as you might have guessed, that is not possible yet. This is a pre-production prototype car, not ready for me to take it out on the road and see how it does, but I am excited to get behind the wheel as soon as possible. Like I said, Chevy says this car is coming out later this year, not sure exactly when, but hopefully I'll get some seat time before that and I can tell you how it feels to drive the world's first hybrid Corvette. And so that's the new 2024 Chevy Corvette E-Ray. This is a huge departure from the usual for the Corvette. Frankly, just like the C8 itself. Like I said, I can't drive this yet since it's just a prototype, but I can't wait to get behind the wheel soon of the hybrid Corvette.